Okay, my name is Tom Lonergan. I'm the Technology Coordinator in, in, uh, in PBST Technology and Education. And uh, I'm going to talk today about uh, Works Networks for Mobile Learning, including BYOD. Um, so, the session overview, and I'm going to try and sit through the slide pretty quickly, so maybe we can have some time for questions afterwards. Um, so, it's kind of a bit 50 50 overview, some advice on securing wireless, and some of you have wireless, we'll talk about different types of wireless, um, so considerations on pitfalls, a planned approach, something about specification, cost. We'll talk about BYOD in the session in the second part, different models and opportunities and challenges. Okay, we've, we've heard a lot this morning about the wider contextual uh, environment we hope we you know we live in, and uh, we're all you know trying to be as effective as we can within. So I'm not really going to talk too much about it, but some of the words that were mentioned there are on around that slide. So our changes in understanding of learning, the model we use. Pedagogy, knowledge construction. John was talking about constructivist uh, or constructionist. <laughs> we said we there, John. Yeah, okay. uh, so, student centered learning, diversity, peer learning, all these kind of things, right? Uh, motivation. Uh, that, 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 you know, I think these are the things that you know, the aesthetic community uh, you know, have really pushed the boundaries on. So, I thought the bottom line is. How can technology support transform the learning model? How can they support this? How can they enhance it? How can they make it easier to, uh, to implement? And I suppose teaching and learning is at the core of any strategic approach. So there's four key elements of ICT infrastructure which I like to simplify for myself. And those would be, out there we've got these clouds, right? So we saw some nice pictures of clouds this morning. This was one that I liked because there's so much up there. There's so much diversity up there. There's so many symbols that kind of uh, epitomize uh, or symbolize uh, the services, the apps, the kind of things we like to do in the cloud. So there's a whole mishmash of stuff up there. I'm involved with school programs as well, uh, with the park, with the two departments, and the HGANET, the school broadband service that supports to me. I guess I get I work with them every day. So 50% of my time is involved in connecting schools, or maybe 4%, and the rest with regard to the rest of the technology. So that's why that connection is critical. At post-primary, we're getting 100 megs to, uh, to post-primary 100 megabits per second. We've got about 550 schools connected. We're going to be connecting maybe the rest of the post-primaries uh, this year. And, and we are looking at faster broadband for, for primary schools as well, including up to 100 megabits. Uh, so, and then the other two, two areas are the wireless network and the network in the school. And that is becoming more and more wireless. It's simply a hybrid network. Every wireless network is a, is a combination of fixed and wireless. And at the end of that, we've got lots of devices. So, student devices, teacher devices, <coughs> other, other devices as well. But the real, the real thing we're talking about is the device in front of us. How do we, what do we do with that device? And how does that ecosystem fit together? So how do we get how do we make it as seamless as possible to get from this device through the two networks, wireless and the broadband, out to here to work in a cloud-based manner? Because the world has shifted significantly. In the past, we didn't have this key link here. And so when I joined the NCT in uh, 2002, uh, we had dial-up broadband in 2002. And uh, hopefully we've progressed a little bit since. So, a couple of key areas, I'm talking about fit for purpose wireless, something a little bit about the architecture of the wireless controller, reference customers, uh, and this is kind of focusing on if you're going out to buy wireless, make sure you do, you know, get a good system. That the, that the company has expertise, that it meets technical requirements, that there's ongoing support, and a little bit about pricing. So, what is the level of wireless access across the school? So, we asked this question to, I think this was, a whole bunch of post-primary schools. In fact, we sent it out there as an online survey. And uh, so all the post-primary schools, this was uh, about a year ago, I sent out this very simple survey. Where have you got it? And you can see there, some schools said they had it in all areas, 24% of general classrooms, 41% of their staff rooms, 6.5% in the sports hall, uh, etc. So it, it's a mishmash, right? 
We ask them, are you satisfied with your work? Some people said, 8.2% said, very satisfied. Uh, 27, 28, high. Uh, a good 50%, yeah, it's okay. And obviously, some, some uh, you know, a significant percentage say, you know, poor satisfaction. Again, not surprising, because it's a real mishmash out there. The quality of the world. So we asked a couple more detailed questions. Has the wireless network been uh, recently installed? So, you know, quite a few has. Is it scalable to support a growing number of student devices over the school? Uh, again, about 50% or less. Uh, support of some extent. Is technical support currently provided for the wireless network? Again, a mix. Is it centrally managed? A mix. And is it secure? A lot of people said yes. A couple of comments, just on the 74 of the, from the last week. Uh, a couple of people, because uh, someone put up a question on wireless networks, and a couple of people came back and said, what's your wireless? Uh, I think it was uh, Noel Cunningham asked the question. Uh, and a couple of people came back and said, yeah, my wireless is a primary school who lately started around. Someone else said they had two routers, uh, to create Wi-Fi, uh, and some, in, some access to free baths and offices. That was a primary. Someone else uh, that our old, very old large old building has two flaky living room wireless access points. I guess home net home access points, right? And the rest is work. Dot, APs dotted around to give teachers uh, use and access to school iPads. And uh, one secondary school, a mobile router. I guess it was going on maybe on a trolley or something like that. Okay, so what's a wireless network? It is just a combination of a couple of couple of pieces of equipment. There's a, these things are the things, the access points, these APs. You might see them uh, on the wall or whatever. Um, here in GMIT, I just asked a question earlier on, how many access points would you have in a place like GMIT as opposed to at home? Uh, a couple of different answers, but basically uh, they have about 40, they're buying 50 more, and they're getting 30 more after that. So that just goes to show you know, the demand, the capacity, the evolution, they're probably doing some change outs in terms of older technology to newer technology. Uh, so that's the APs. There's a switch in the middle or a controller. And it links out to the broadband router and basically gives you connectivity out to the cloud. So, general points uh, is essential for mobile learning for a mobile learning model. Um, the wireless networks that are out there at the moment. If you're, unless you've recently got it and the high quality, it's going to come under ever increasing demand to deliver what you want to do in your school. Wireless networks that worked in the past, if it's in there, these slides will be available on the network and whatever. But yeah, no problem. Yeah, but feel free to take photographs, it doesn't matter. Uh, uh, but they're no, the older ones are no longer able to cook, right? They're struggling. I've talked to some people there that. Having some issues with a wireless network, and maybe I think that's typical, you know, in, in any school. I talk to a lot of schools on a regular basis, and you know, it really, it really, unless you put in a fit for purpose, high quality, recent, you know, modern wireless uh, system, you know, you're going to struggle. And what is happening right across schools is some schools are going in with maybe iPads for first years, uh, tablets for first years, uh, other devices for first years. Maybe BYOD, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, and, and basically, as you move forward, as more devices come on, issues happen. So and have to be up, you have to look at that on a number basis. Uh, so there's a risk that you, you know, you invest in stuff that's not fit for purpose. It needs to be scalable. And just this point here, for post primary it's becoming less of an issue now because we have faster broadband out there. But let's say you're a rural primary school and you spend a lot of money buying devices, and maybe you might think of spending a lot of money on other stuff as well, but your broadband connection could be a limiting factor. You know, what we are doing on the, on the broadband program is we're trying to bring up the level of broadband right across the peak, so right? because we know you're struggling, right? And if it's working okay today, if there's some primary schools last week or the week before, and I asked them what their broadband was like, most of that was okay, which was good, but I know that it's okay for now. It's not necessarily okay for the future. So we are looking with the department on ways to improve that, but it could be a limiting factor. 
So challenges and pitfalls. There's a wide range of, of, of systems out there, a wide range of companies uh, selling, pushing, wireless, want to install in your school, calling you up. You can't believe what they say, uh, unfortunately. Some of them are good, some of them are not so good. Uh, wireless is very different to fixed networking. It's evolving. There's a depth of high quality expertise out there. It's very hard to get independent as well. So I've been, in fact, I used to work in Galway for 12 years <coughs> a telephones company uh, years ago. I've been with the NCD for 12 more, so you can see I've been around a <laughs> while. Uh, and it's very difficult to get independent advice because a lot of consultants are to know the companies that they work with and stuff like that. You've got to be careful, right? Maybe talk to different people, but talk to schools, right? And schools are the most demanding environment out there for wireless. So if someone comes in and they say, I've installed my wireless in a big sports stadium, in a VMware Coke Park, it doesn't matter. It is a totally different uh, scenario. The people are there to watch a game or something like that. They've got mobile devices. They're not downloading big uh, files. They're not on the virtual learning environment. They're not uploading stuff. So it, it, and I've heard some crazy numbers for us. Uh, like a large stadium having something like 20 access points or something like that. That's, that's, that's like a, a primary school, uh, you know, to, to, to be good for folks. So, wireless that cannot scale to handle schools maximum density are not fit for folks. That's the word fit there. Uh, and, they need to be, and you may need to replace them as your demands grow. Right? That is a concern. Uh, if, you, if you need more advice on this, whatever, give me a shout. Every school is different, so every school layout, this is just one of a pretty new school, it's a big school. Uh, so, and they, and you know, uh, in terms of planning, in terms of coverage, in terms of priorities, you know, a big school, uh, thinking about, you know, how much would it cost to put, uh, you know, this is a thousand pupil school, how much would it cost to put wireless in there? It might cost 30 or 40 or more grand, right? That's the bad news. Uh, there are some good solutions out there. And obviously schools don't have that kind of cash lying around, so they may decide, okay, we need to prioritize, we need to do this section or whatever. Now, and, and upgrade later. Or you might put in an infrastructure that uh, you might have your first years on your tablets, so they might be in the second part of the building. So you can actually kind of connect up your learning objectives, your, learning, uh, your planning goals with maybe your infrastructure planning as well. Uh, Basically, I suppose I'm saying here, don't be impressed by someone coming in with a fancy, fancy tools and gadgets and saying, look, well, I can model your school, I can do it all on the computer, I can simulate the whole thing. You can download these stuff, this stuff on the internet. Uh, and there, you know, uh, so don't be impressed. Cabling is, is actually going to be a big cost of the, the world part. So, but uh, typically all the world companies do is they plug their access points into your existing cabling infrastructure. That saves them the cost of putting new cables and stuff like that. So they all do that. Generally, cast iron is, is fine for this kind of stuff. It may need to be upgraded later. If you're putting in a new network, it needs to be cast six. But cabling is excessive. OK, there's lots of wireless standards out there. These are some of the old ones. Uh, 802.11a, b, c, d. And I know this, this is not a technical presentation. This is basically just saying, Yes, there are lots of standards. Some older devices meet this, this standard here. Then these are the more newer specs here. This has been around for quite a while. Uh, and now what's happening is companies are coming out with this new spec, right? So as the specs get, get, uh, get, get uh, the newer specs, the, the quality of the world gets better. The, 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 the data throughput gets better. So um, one thing, I've, I've written a document for schools which basically says this is advice for schools and this is how you procure it, right? So this may sound like a lot of stuff, but it's kind of captured in a model where you write your document, you, write, you, you take the document, you, you just add, add in your own kind of uh, uh, specifics with regard to your school, you know, what size your school is, how many classrooms, that kind of stuff. You put it out to tender, the company says, Yes, we meet all this stuff because they've got to meet all this stuff, and then you, uh, you, you, you know, you, 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 you basically decide which one you want. So this is kind of the process. So first of all, you think about what you want to do. Maybe link it into the e-learning handbook. Uh, review the document. 
develop a plan, consult with stakeholders, uh, seek advice from other schools. So there's an increasing number of schools out there now who have gone out and gone through this process, and there's nothing better than talking to another school who's done this. Similar type school, you know, what are the pitfalls, what are the challenges, what are the things that we got for, what companies gave good support. That peer network of your colleagues, of your, your fellow schools. Uh, if they've had a good experience, you know, the likely one is you'll have a good experience as well. And don't go with someone who is, I, I get the schools who call me and just say, I've got this lovely guy, he's an ex-pupil, and he's working for this company. Now he may be a lovely guy, right? And he may have your best chance, uh, you know, your best interest at heart, but he may not be the right person. He may be the right person, but he may not be. So don't let sentimentality or something get in the way of, of, of making a, 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 you know, a decision which might, might not be the most optimal for your school. Um, develop your, you know, use our template, go out to a minimum of four to five companies, you need to do that because you will get, you will get different deals and there are some companies who will give you more cost effective, better support, all that kind of stuff. Um, a word of contract, and then it's then at that stage you can you install it, and then you know there's lots of other uh, things, issues about supporting it. So what the product networks do? When they're installed, they get installed properly. You literally almost can forget them. Five minutes. Five minutes. Okay. Okay. Uh, they need support to identity. Seamless roaming has to happen between the access points, and they need to be future proof. I'm going to have to speed up there. They need to support a range of devices, they need to have a management interface, they need to monitor, they need to have outdoor access points, and uh, they need to make sure that they're secure. There's lots of specifications which are captured in the document, so you don't need to worry about it. The controller has to do a whole pot of things, so it's a central controller that manages all the access points. The company that puts it in, they have to coordinate the works, they have to test it, so there's no point in you know, just installing it. It's got to work. And you've got to have a process in place for that. Uh, it's got to have warranty. And reference customers are critical and essential. So, again, unless a company has reference customers, good reference customers, don't go with them. Why, why take the risk? Acceptance testing, it's got to work. There's lots of different, a uh, number of different tests in the document. Training support, additional uh, etc. <coughs> is very important. There are different pricing models. School purchases with own equipment, they can purchase TAPs while the controller could be remotely based. Uh, school pay for a man of service only. Beware of hidden costs. Uh, there could be ongoing yearly license costs. Be very careful about the, you know, the small print and stuff like that. And one thing, we have, there may be a framework for, school, for, for, for wireless for schools, but we don't have a specific plan for that yet. So, in summary, fit for purpose. Uh, reference customers, demonstrate wireless capability, must meet technical requirements, high support, and present flexibility. I never want to be going there. Okay, BYOD, bring your own device. Uh, that is the question. Uh, so if you read the Horizon 2013 report, a lot of stuff in there saying BYOD is one of the key technologies in the current year. What does BYOD look like? This is not a heavy school bag. Hope. Uh, uh, these are two enthusiastic uh, uh, youngsters who think BYD might, might be a teacher. Uh, hopefully it's going to be a little bit smaller in the pocket. <laughs> um, so what is BYD? Bring your own device. Some people call it bring your own distraction. Be careful. Uh, uh, so people and students bring their own tablets, laptops, smartphones, or whatever, uh, with, so within and outside the class. So linking the two. Um, why BOD? Because tablets have new capabilities and attributes that other devices couldn't have. They instant uh, on, battery life, ease of use, form factor, bus function, robustness, lower levels of tech support, and apps. Uh, lack of school phones. There is there isn't school phones out there to get a, a device for every people. Now, first of all, you've got to, obviously, schools have got to think about is that, do we want one to one? Is that the model we want to go with? Uh, so, BYD can use fit for purpose working devices that family, families already have, otherwise they remain on the other Think of the amount of tablets that are sitting at home taking up. Changing practice is difficult. I appreciate, I appreciate the text, Kate, but next time just raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> Change requires buy in from all students, staff, and the school community. Question Are teachers really prepared for this? 
That's a question. I've got a similar question as well. There are some reality, uh, some obstacles, uh, sort of the risk of inappropriate uh, use. I talked to some principal during the week, that was a big one for them. Uh, and additional classroom management challenges. It is already happening. Uh, it needs to be consistent with, with the pedagogical model that you have in your school. Consult with your teachers, uh, and it may not be for, for every school at the moment. But, uh, and there are some tools out there to, once you've got it in place, there are some tools out there to help. There are devices called mobile device management tools, which help you to kind of, in theory, you kind of say, if we were all connected in here, I could say, press the button, all the cameras are off. Okay? Control. That may be a good thing, but it may be a bad thing. They're only tools, they, they're not going to solve your problems. They're not going to uh, make classroom management that, that easy. Uh, but they may help. Uh, to improve change of the chance of success, to give them a small amount, pilot it, make sure that the, you're, you're, success, you're successful at small, at small levels. This is just a kind of a couple of things that we <coughs> case study of an elementary school in, in Georgia. Um, big focus on responsible yet dynamic use of students' own devices for learning. Um, it is happening in an increasing number of districts because of tight budget constraints, leading to higher and more innovative student achievement <coughs> and serve individual uh, learning needs. And they did find that they had to do a lot of work on their radio theater, but Clear rules, uh, so everybody knows what the rules are. Systematic rollout was again a big focus on responsible use. Issues will occur. Expect, uh, they're expected rather than a reason to abandon the project. And, and I think that's a key point. These studies are learning opportunities. Uh, yes, it's risky, <coughs> but I think it's riskier for us not to do this. And, and then have kids try to figure it out on their own. So it's a critical part of the, 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 the integration of ICT in their model. There, now, very quickly, there are three models, there are a couple of models. One specific device, iPads for, for, for everybody. Uh, Tom, I think we'll have to. Okay. Yeah. Um, you, can, you, can, you can spread it out to more devices, or you can have lots of different devices. Um, Again, if, if, if the devices are at home, then the parents don't have to repay for them again. Um, there are recommended guidelines. Uh, I guess consultation with your user community is a big one. Um, and working with external partners. Um, I won't repay them. Is it <laughs> replacing with one, two, one another? This is what my seven year old says. A tablet could help me with a lot of this stuff. And this is what this is her view on life. Thank you. So <laughs>